for so far uh, into the conference. Uh, thank you for being here and thank you Avi and all the guys and OASP for having me. So let's start. Uh, we're going to talk about MQTT. I'm going to explain shortly what is MQTT of course and what the hell we're supposed to do here and why we have a table on the front of the stage without, without anything except a blinking light. It will be blinking actually. So first, mandatory hi. Oh, mandatory, it doesn't work. Just a second. Something needs to fail. So hi, my name is Moshe Zioni. I'm a security research, research manager at Variant. Um, many years into security, uh, having fun breaking stuff all the time. And this time it, we're talking IoT, Internet of Things. Uh, without further ado, what we are going to do today. We're going to learn about MQTT. What is, it, what is exactly all the hype about? If there, uh, if there is any hype. Um, what kind of tools are using MQTT? Why, why sh we should, or maybe we shouldn't, use MQTT, the security model and the insecurity within the model. Lastly, and of course, the attack side of things. How we do reconnaissance on, on those devices, what, inter what, is, what, is it, what is interesting to harvest, how can we exploit those devices, and of course, uh, hopefully, we'll have a, a live demo over here, but it will, will be from here. Okay. MQTT stands for, as you see, message, queue, telemetry, transport, whatever. It means some, a simple thing. This simple thing actually means that you or any kind of device can connect to any other device and talk uh, with a very lightweight protocol uh, of communication. Now, the, the thing is that we have many protocols. The most prominent uh, protocol for the internet is, of course, HTTP. Everyone knows HTTP. Uh, and the protocol itself is not complicated. But it is kind of heavy on communication side when we are talking about very small devices. When we are talking IoTs, we are talking about, about very small embedded devices. Nothing like your Android or, or iPhone. Or nothing even close to any kind of computer that you ever had. Actually, maybe except the 486 and the Pentium. <laughs> But, and here we have, for example, and we'll talk about su su such examples for embedded devices. Uh, any of you have ever programmed the Arduino? Show of hands. Cool, wow, so many. Um, so Arduino have like, you can find several Arduino light devices that have up to maybe 100 me megahertz per second. Megahertz, we should say. So, um, if we're looking into regular Arduinos, we're talking about 26, maybe 48. Uh, megahertz. It's a very small amount of computing power and when we're talking something like that on my, on my table is the ESP8266. 80, 80 it's a very small in comparison to any kind of computer that you have. So that's why we need to have something very lightweight, very lightweight in terms of communication, fingerprint on the memory, uh, etc. and maybe in storage and anything like that. Everything that we know of is getting very shrinked and very small. So we have to comprehend this. So we, ha you, we can connect many devices through MQTT to one major hub. The hub is, uh, is usually called maybe a server, maybe an, an MQTT uh, server, and, and, and we have several other names for that. We can uh, synonymously use hub or server. And after we have the server, the server is connected and many devices can connect to it and talk to it. Why we need this server, what, what we are doing with it. So first, uh, for example, we have the mobile device and we have the sensor. Both of those computers and both of those processes are connected to the uh, broker, which is the formal name for the server. Uh, talk, talking with the broker and, and the broker is coordinating between all the messages. If you are familiar, familiar with MQ, you should, be, you should be very familiar with the process that we are going to go through. So the first thing we, we are doing with the broker is sending a sub, a subscribe. We'll talk about two types of communication, subscribe and publish. I, and I'm not, I'm not just joking, it, it's the very, very basic atoms of those communications. And we don't have many more communications. I'll, I'll explain what, what else I'm omitting here, and it's not much. So first of all, we need to sub, to subscribe to some kind of a channel. Think of the channel or a topic, that's the formal name of it. Channel is like something that you know from uh, actually any kind of communication protocols, if it's IRC or, any, or anything else. You have some kind of a topic, some kind of a reserved name, mostly hierarchy related name that should tell you about what you are going to listen to, what kind of messages you are going to receive. 
So first of all, you need to subscribe to Weather TLV. That's the name of the, of the channel or the topic that we're talking about. So the mobile devices, um, the, the sensor is talking with, uh, is subscribing to Weather TLV, and maybe the mobile devices is subscribing to Mobile TLV through the broker. So now the broker have two items in memory, um, the mobile device that and the sensor this is talking to me and they are subscribed to this channel. If anyone will publish publish anything on this channel, they them two are going to get the message directly from the broker. So from now on, after the subscription, the broker does all the stuff. Just waiting for, for the queue to fill up and when some kind of a message get, comes in, it will uh, um, pass along the line um, the messages. So the, the next thing that, that's going to happen, uh, someone, for this example, the sensor of course, is going to transmit or publish uh, the communication topic with LTLV, uh, the value 29C. That's, a, that, that's, that's just a string. A string named 29C. So what will, do, what will, will happen next? The broker will get the, the, pub, the publish uh, communication uh, protocol and through the publish it will think about hmm, who is subscribed to this uh, to the weather TLV weather th slash TLV so we you have the mobile device that was subscribed to it so let's send it uh, his way so the the publish will get to uh, to the to the um, mobile device through the broker after the broker have, have gone through some thought and through its record and saw that everyone that subscribed to it got the message about something that I've omitted from these uh, examples are of course the connection. Uh, you have to establish a connection or maybe a disconnection before you are talking to the broker. Uh, I've, I've omitted a very important part of the QoS. Maybe the broker is keep on sending this public, uh, uh, publish requests uh, and maybe not. Uh, if that's the quality of service, uh, maybe O, 1 and 2, I won't talk about it because it will complicate things that is not important, are not important for uh, security sake for that, for that um, scope of talk. And of course, the keep alive. Uh, nothing can be communicated all the time, it's a TCP protocol, uh, and we need to talk, uh, we need to have a keep alive just for the communication, not to break in, and some kind of optimization for the communication. So, believe me or not, that's simple. It gets such a simple uh, um, scheme for publication and subscription. Hopefully, that was pretty okay by you. So now, after we get this straight, we have a hierarchy. The hierarchy of the topics are important. Why? Because the hierarchy can symbolize uh, to, to the person or to the subscri subscriber what kind of topic he is subscribed to, but more importantly, it, it can be a batch, it can uh, subscribe to a batch uh, channels uh, in uh, one instance. And that's a reserved uh, name for that. For example, we have a weather slash TLV slash humidity. And then we have a weather slash TLV slash temp. Or in the hierarchy, we, we can see the weather, now TLV. The weather, now TLV. It have a, another uh, branch for this hierarchy, and they, they have temp and humidity. On the other hand, we have also weather slash Jer for Jerusalem, and then temp for Jerusalem. If he wants to subscribe both to humidity and temp, you can subscribe to weather TLV pound key or pound symbol. Now, now you will be subscribed both to humidity and temp. On the other hand, if you want to subscribe to TLV uh, temp and Jerusalem temp. You just need to say weather plus temp. So you will be subscribed to any kind of city that is, that is sending public pub publishing uh, temperature for this broker. Uh, so, so far it's pretty nice, nothing harmful, allegedly. And now we are talking about who is, who is using MQTT? Why, why I'm spending like, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes for, so, so far just to, to, just to talk about this kind of communication, why we need that? So the main usage for MQTT is, is home automation, and we have some, uh, some protocols that are using it for pure messaging. Facebook Messenger is using by its infrastructure, most of it uh, from Facebook is by MQTT. Now that's got pretty interesting, but that's to say that Facebook is one of the few that are publicly um, transmitted that they are using MQTT for this kind of messaging. So let's stay with home automation because that's the most major use, usage that you will find online. 
<coughs> One small automation, why we need that? I will not talk about, a lot about it, but let me just say for now that notable mentions for that is AWS, Microsoft, IoT Hub, both are cloud services that both of <coughs> Amazon and Microsoft are providing and getting a huge traction on that uh, just because of, of course, uh, the demand by the, uh, by the customers. Now, so we have a home and it's connected to everything, maybe for the shade, maybe for the lights, maybe we have even an automatic toilet, I don't know, and maybe a cat feeder, and all those things are connected to one broker maybe, maybe on the cloud, maybe on your premise, and on, uh, in your house, whatever you, you want to do with it. And when people are seeing this picture and thinking about home automation, I receive two kind of responses. The first response is, wow, that's awesome. I need home automation. Why? I need to feed my cat right now. No matter where I am, an entity is the thing for that. So that's one reaction. The other reaction is exactly that. That was mentioned, uh, there was an AWS Amazon's um, convention in Tel Aviv, uh, like uh, I think it was like four or five months ago. It was pretty huge and pretty, um, uh, pretty successful in terms of uh, attendees. And uh, Philips showed how they turn out on the lights through MQTT, through AWS Cloud IoT service uh, broker. And one, and not only one of the, uh, of, uh, from the hacker Twitterverse tweeted, why the F did we all become so effing lazy? What the actual F is this crap? And this is the second response that I actually get from many people. Now, after this show, I'll let you alone decide if you want it or not. The thing is, it's, it's becoming a trend and everyone are using it. Everyone uh, along the stream, maybe you will find it in China, you'll find it many, mainly in Europe, in saunas uh, and stuff like that that need to be uh, connected for some reason. And of course, in the, in the United States, everything is coming from the United States in this, in this matter. Um, so that's the response, I will leave it there. Why it's important for us? Because we need to deal with security. So I need to say that MQTT is pretty solid in terms of protocol. If you read the documents for MQTT, it's an ever-evolving document. It's now in, uh, I think, the official version for the documentation at 3.1 for the protocol, and it's pretty uh, up to date. You have TLS, by definition, you have TLS inside it. You have client certificate, which is awesome if you are talking about authentication. Uh, you can do permissions per topic, per method, if it's publishing or subscribing, and per QoS, which I haven't mentioned, as I said. So, that's pretty cool, right? Pretty solid security, but. Now, it's, it has an insecurity model within it. Because if you paid attention, you saw that the broker is the one that is sending the communication throughout the network, and the, the first one that is publishing to the broker is another item or uh, another entity. And no protocol is devised for now between the broker and the pub uh, publishers to communicate which topics should have wh what kind of permissions. Now, that's pretty confusing, not only for you, but also for me. I'll have an, an example, just on this table I have the Sonoff, which I will turn it in a demo. Um, and the Sonoff, uh, Sonoff have an open source uh, firmware, that's cool, <laughs> and you can read it. But no one actually, ma many people did it, and the documentation is pretty solid, but in this case I found an API which is not mentioned anywhere, a topic which is not mentioned anywhere in the, the, the documentation, and of course I've added it to the official documentation. <laughs> but if I haven't done so, there was at least one topic which is harmful for, for the user, which was able to be permission-wide or very, very sparse in permissions, and actually everyone could have um, used, used it or exploit this kind of topic. Maybe it's a bit, of a bit of a confusion for now because we haven't established what is the topic yet and we'll get it in a few slides, but believe me, the broker slash publisher uh, uh, dichotomy, you ha we have many, many problems within it. The second thing is that is it uh, directed mostly to the tech savvy, which is something I guess uh, will be changed in a, in a year or two because that's the, the thing with technology which is evolving and um, engrossing everyone. The other thing is that it's, um, you have authorization by default. The brokers that are online, we are talking about Mosquito, that's the most prominent uh, um, broker out there. It's an open source uh, from Eclipse Foundation. 
Um, and uh, for my testing, I've tested like 2,000 and something devices around the internet, which is not mine, and uh, found that the brokers were 80% plus from Mosquito. Um, there are like two more, like Active MQ for IBM, and you have um, a Hive MQ, which is another prominent example, but uh, Mosquito is the most, most prominent one, as I said. Um, so if the protocol is very protected, and you have TLS, right? You can say to me right now, they have TLS built in, right? So let me just say that TLS is pretty hard on those devices. We're talking about very small devices, and we'll see two examples for those difficult, for these difficulties. The one is from the official Arduino client for MQTT, which, is, which cannot support SSL TLS for now. That's from today. It cannot support it at all because it's pretty hard for us, it's such a small device to comprehend a, com a communication to keep uh, so much memory in place and we're talking a huge amount of memory. Here in the, in the comments uh, section of the uh, firmware that I've mentioned for the Sonoff, they're written TLS uses a lot of memory, 20K, so be careful to enable other options at the, at the, at the same time. And it's disabled by default. So, even if it's uh, by definition inside the protocol, you can't use it with Sonoff, which is the single most prominent example for MQTT for now. And you, can use it, you can't use it with Arduino because you don't have much power on Arduino, so you can't do SSL, whatever you des desire to, it doesn't matter. Okay, so those are the two prominent examples for that. Moving on. The most successful vulnerability that I found every time and again we're talking about IOTs, which kind of vulnerabilities they have? One kind of vulnerabilities, features. <laughs> Those are the best vulnerabilities for IOTs, believe me. And you should test it, test it yourself, not just believing me, of course. So we'll go through a, a couple of features in um, a few slides. When we're talking fun and profit, how we can start with exploiting or maybe researching MQTT, whatever you desire. So the, th the first th thing to note is that you have several default um, ports that you can utilize in order to use MQTT. Of course, anyone can use whatever port he needs or, or wants to use, but the defaults are mainly not changed in terms of standard. So you have uh, the t TCP, you have TCP with SSL, you have WebSockets, which is pretty cool and convenient if you have um, enough powerful IoT device to use uh, WebSockets, and WebSockets plus SSL. Uh, with with uh, those two are getting traction, but not so much. So if you want to show them those, you can just look for 8083 and 8083, 1883 and 8083, um, and through that you can find many devices as well and just enumerate them. After enumeration, uh, you can do many things uh, that will, will scope down the thing that you want to test or, or research. You can look for Mosquito, you can you, uh, look for the port that I've mentioned, and you'll find out by yourself uh, the topics that you are uh, uh, actually desire to, uh, to, call, to go after. In this case, uh, we're talking about the broker, about the Mosquito that I have here in the Raspberry Pi. Uh, is uh, communicating through MQTT. The son of is, is uh, connected to the Raspberry Pi that I have here. And the Mosquito server have defaults. Now, I haven't mentioned the dollar sign. The dollar sign says that you can't enumerate it all. If, if, you, want, if you would like to enumerate all the topics uh, instead, we can use just a, a pound key, right? The pound sign. Why? Because the pound sign is a wildcard. If I'm just subscribing to the pound sign, I'm subscribing to every topic that is on the, the uh, broker unless it's um, starting with the dollar sign. Now, if you, if you will look into AWS, AWS smartly decided to use a dollar sign instead of just AWS as a topic, so you can't, you, you can't actually enumerate it as easy as I showed right now. But there is a documentation for a dollar sys, and dollar sys is by protocol. Uh, on, on each and every broker you will have a dollar sys, and those kind of topics will, will have it uh, within it. Those are the topics that, topics that I've collected through the documentation and through the source code as well. So I believe we are not missing much here. Uh, so if you just subscribe to those topics on every kind of broker, you'll get a lot of information about the devices that are connected, what kind of devices, what kind of topics, how much traffic it gets, etc., etc. Uh, pretty interesting just to start with the brokers. Then, um, 
okay, that's, that's the thing that I, I just said. Um, and then I, we get into the details. What kind of devices are connected to those brokers? So don't, these are kind of, a kind of a rule of the thumbs, or of thumb if you want to uh, discover uh, a specific kind of uh, devices. The list can go on and on, of course. I'm just presenting here um, whatever I find consistent. Um, so you have the Harmony, which is by Logitech, very interesting hub. Uh, Z-Wave, uh, used, used for home automation. I've, I've mentioned saunas. It has many saunas in Sweden, if you, if you fancy one. Uh, Son of IT, DVS, it's the uh, switch that I have. It, it only functions as an on-off switch. It's pretty practical if you think about it, because if you just want to make your home automated, you need an on-off switch by, by, for the basic functioning. So that's pretty, pretty practical if you just buy a bunch for a few dollars and connect your house through Sonoffs. Then you have the open hand, IO broker, home assistant, you will have it on uh, the slides as well, and on tracks. Now, on tracks is interesting because it's very prominent within mobile devices. Mobile devices are using MQTT, MQTT 2, especially apps that are connected to GPS, and if you want to spy on your kids or spouse for some reason. Now, if you are using on tracks, that's interesting because on tracks. Oops, uh, on tracks are uh, keeping GPS tracking software on your mobile device and then connecting to the cloud on the MQTT broker and sends the information uh, to you to you for your full blown um, spying agency that you have. Um, we'll come to own tracks later again. Another gems within it, uh, for this example, I just enumerated um, all the topics that I could, could find on the device, on some broker. I guess you can't see that. It says minus U R E burger minus P uh, at sign Claren 5, which is the maybe the password for the Mosquito server and maybe for its SSH. I won't recommend anyone to test it. Um, now that's something that, that it, this is a mishap. It, it tried to write something on the command line and it just injected it into topics within the Mosquito server. Uh, that's an error, of course, but we can uh, greatly um, affect the, the operation of the Mosquito by that. The other thing, you can't see that, and I'm, and I'm apologizing for that, but I'll tell you, it's just a bunch of SQL injection attempts over topics. Remember, everyone that will publish a topic will, will generally uh, devise a new topic on the broker if the broker does not uh, comprehend what kind of topic are you using. So someone tried to use SQL injection on the, mosquitoes, on, the, on the mosquito broker and the mosquito broker just wrote it all down uh, into topics. Now, maybe someone tried to publish all of those topics and maybe some other web application uh, is using uh, MQT in the background and someone tried to SQL inject the web application and through that it got into the publication and to the broker and then you just list it. And now you're just saying like, I don't know, maybe 50 lines? I'm talking about more than 50. K lines of SQL injection attempts. Um, I don't know if it, if it was successful, but I guess it's, it wasn't. Um, on tracks, I'm, I'm coming back to that for a second because on tracks, that's the way it keeps your data. You can read and you can subscribe to the on tracks uh, server or the on tracks broker and receive. Um, some kind of inf information, latitude, longitude, um, location, that's a type, there are many types you can, you can send in. Um, the timestamp for that, it's an epoch, of course, the accuracy of the GPS, the battery level, uh, those are, are the interesting things. Now, I tried it. That's um, actually a, a genuine line, a topic that I found in some broker, and by the broker being open to the internet, I just can spy on, on people. Now, it's something that is pretty childish, childish but I'm, I'm a child. So, um, I tried it on someone, and then uh, designated, designated some stuff. So, whoa, whoa, that's cool, okay. Uh, let's open up uh, the map and let, let's locate those longitude and latitude that we got. So, I got somewhere in Dallas, that's cool, right? No. Uh, Dallas is not cool, but, but yet again, we found it in Dallas. So, okay, let's zoom in. We have Google Maps now. We are in the future. And we are using Google Maps to see exactly where the, where the signal is coming from. And now it got a bit weird. Because this, this thing, the first thing that I saw is a huge building. I will turn off the light because the impact is important. 
Okay? Yeah? No? I don't know. I'll try. Um, so you can't see anything, right? But then I'm zooming in and it says, okay, so maybe it was an, a, the first MQTT troll in the internet, I don't know, and, and maybe he wasn't. And then again, it's a, it's a, good, it's a great game. Um, thank you very much, troll. Uh, but I, I persistently tried to uh, assess the location. Okay. Um, and and uh, persistently on, and he, he, he moved, or he or she moved uh, from this location and traveled. Uh, you can see a very, very, um, very, very obvious pattern of traffic going uh, into traffic somewhere and then maybe home, maybe walk. I don't know. As I said, childish, but maybe uh, Archer can use it for spying. Okay. Um, but let's get on to the smart home applications, which I said is, is residing here on this table. Um, we, are, we are talking about this device. It's a pretty small device encased in plastic. When we uncover the plastic, we can see that. Nothing important, nothing special. Just a very small device, have an on and off relay. You can see here the relay. It, it has the light, you can see there the light. And, a, of course, an, uh, a mains input and mains output. I tried to connect it to mains directly. It blew up, so don't try that. Uh, even though it says on the team that it can support up to 10 amps, no way. Um, so mains is not recommended. That's the, that's the reason why I'm connecting it to something else. Um, and then, at the back of it, there, it is much more interesting. Here you have the Wi-Fi, because you need to connect to the MQTT, right? It not, doesn't connect through Ethernet. It doesn't have about WPA vulnerability yet. And then we have the Wi-Fi. We have the ESP8266, which is a crazy, a crazy thing right now, pretty cool. If you want to hear something about it, uh, come later, maybe even get one for free for me. And uh, you have, of course, a very ugly kind of soldering here, um, uh, air gapping, uh, something pretty basic in, uh, in electrical engineering, and that's the important stuff. A small, very small CPU with very small uh, uh, fingerprint for memory, and you can use it for, for many stuff, and as I said, Wi-Fi on board. That's pretty huge, and only cost a few dollars just to implement that. Um, okay, so that's pretty neat, I guess. And it has many topics that I found interesting. In this example, we are using, we, you, can, you can ask for the SSID for the Wi-Fi. Maybe you have a second Wi-Fi, that's the CMMD son of SSID 2. You have the Wi-Fi password on some kind of a topic for some reason. You have the wi second Wi-Fi password for some reason. Again, the MQT user pass, if it has a user pass, so you can ask it for, for giving it to you. And you have the o, o, OTA URL, that's important. OTA is over the air. Over the air is the thing that makes you um, upgrade or download a new firmware and then upgrade your, your, uh, your device on the fly. Uh, and the triggering for the over the air. Now, I should mention that all of those topics are free to be published at you can ask those topics without any kind of content, and then you can be subscribing. You can you can get it, its contents, and through that you can easily enumerate the SSID and password of this location for the Wi-Fi, and you can change it as well. If you publish, and by default no permissions, as we said, you can publish to those topics and change the behavior of the device. Now that's very important for our exploitation demo. In this example, I've just enumerated like a thousand devices on the internet, just as a proof of concept, and uh, I just deleted the IP and the IoT type, uh, what kind of Wi-Fi, the name of the Wi-Fi, and the password for the Wi-Fi. Um, you can say, okay, but the Wi-Fi is somewhere around the internet. No one will get to that because it's pretty, um, it's pretty massive to, I don't know, fly to Sweden just for some a quick sauna and then to hijack a Wi-Fi. Maybe if you're a very important person, we, uh, someone will do that. But for us, for the home automation, it's, it's again, the risk is there, but uh, you can minimize the risk by saying that. But I don't need your device. I don't need to be near your device to, uh, in order to uh, hijack this connection. Because as I said, we have the 
we have the OTA, uh, OTA URL, and the OTA URL will tell me what is the URL of which the device will get its new firmware from. And if I'm, as I, I will do in the, uh, in the demo in a second, will publish to this OTA URL, you, you, I will get him to believe a new URL that I will input on my server and then make it to trigger through the upgrade process. The upgrade process will, will make him restart, download a new firmware that I gave him, which I devised, and through that firmware I can hijack the actual sensor to do whatever I, I want him to do, like a small botnet, think Mirai, as terms of IoT. Okay. Um, the firmware that I'm going to show now is called Son of Evil. Um, it's a play of words, of course, and the Son of Angel. Uh, the Son of Angel is something that, that I published later. Uh, just if you want to fix your Son of, because there is no fix for now, you can just install the Son of Angel that makes the MQTT uh, dangerous functions to be disabled uh, and you won't be affected by this exploit. Okay. So now I need to pray for a second. <laughs> Okay, I'm ready. So we have the broker up on, on the table. You, we have the son of. Here we have an Arduino just for power, power regulation. We have two lines, the five volt in the ground. The other ones are disconnected. I'm using actually here a, a, pretty, a more basic approach. The Arduino was the uh, older approach. It's the same just, as, just for power regulation, nothing else than that. And of course the son of that is turned on and you can see the non-blinking light. Non-blinking saying that it is connected correctly. If it was blinking, you would get, get the feel that it wasn't connected to the MQTT broker that I just designated here. And that's just, just a, a shell, nothing in it. Okay, so um, I'll, I'll go uh, through the steps. The first step is to request the Wi-Fi SSID and password. What I'm, why I'm doing that? Not just for fun. I need that because the, the second time I will use it uh, in the compile and evil firmware, I will need to compile it with the definitions for the Wi-Fi and the password unless I want the user to get the feeling that it wasn't connected to the Wi-Fi. So I need to be persisting in connected to Wi-Fi and the second thing that I needed to do is to download my firmware and it will download my firmware and then get the Wi-Fi password synced in and then we'll connect to the internet and we'll, we'll, we'll transmit to the internet whatever I need. I need a, a, a shell back and we'll see, hopefully, a shell back from the device. So again, I will request the Wi-Fi SSID, put the SSID and password into the, the evil firmware, compile it. I won't do it right now, but believe me, I already did it just for uh, uh, making things a bit fa faster. Publish the OTI URL from my domain, from the evil domain. Uh, OTI URL link to point to my evil firmware that I just compiled and forcefully request the OTA upgrade and hopefully we'll have some kind of a profit and call back to attacker of, uh, to the attacker. Eight minutes? Oh, cool. Ah, so we have time. Um, no, just kidding. Okay, so let's get into it. You're all crossing your fingers, right? I can hear you. Okay, so I'll introduce two tools. One of them are, is pretty basic, it's just terminal, connected to my, um, to my um, um, uh, domain. I will duplicate. Okay. Thank you. Um, now, we have one, um, one tool. It's pretty basic. It's the MQTT Lens. There are pretty there are several tools out there to use as an MQTT client. Uh, that's a Chrome extension, actually, a Chrome app. Uh, it was a Chrome app, but now an extension. Someone said something? Oh, yeah, sure. Um, okay, so that's the MQTT Lens. It's a client just to use for publishing and the. Better? Okay. Um, so just for making the publishing and subscribing via GUI and not something like, I don't know, a hardware, it's pretty, uh, pretty easy to, uh, to comprehend. We have the subscribe and we have the publish commands. 
I will now subscribe to, I'm connected to, the, uh, to my uh, MQTT demo. I will subscribe to the broker and I will start to get messages here. Those are the messages that are persistent uh, and, and uh, communicated to me. I can see that the, uh, you can't see that I know, but the Teller Sonoff is online. And it has another thing that uh, is from, from another demo named Own Tracks. Uh, you can see an Own, own Tracks um, record here. Now, the, the second thing that I will do is to show you uh, the SSID 2, because I have two SSIDs for some reason, just for fun. And the SSID 2, you'll see I just published it and, and, got, and got the MQTT demo on the SSID 2 uh, from the son of device, meaning I just send to the broker, uh, hello, I need the, um, I want to get a command son of SSID 2 enacted. <laughs> It was enacted on the broker. The broker thought about this publishing. He knew that the publishing means that everyone that is subscribed to uh, the topic named result will get this, this result from the command that I just sent. So the result was given to me from the broker. MQTT demo, there's something that is known. Uh, we, can, we can try the SSID too, uh, the, SSID, the second one, just SSID, just for fun. And it will say something else, which is pre-recorded, is uh, not a honeypot. So don't try to connect to something named the not a honeypot. Um, so that, that is SSID. I won't show the SSID to password right now, but just uh, after the demo, because I know you guys, um, and um, someone will try to, um, to connect it as well. So, so you have to be on the same access point to do this? No, I just need a connection to the broker from somewhere around the internet. And the brokers are usually uh, on the cloud or on the or front end the internet because you want it to be available from the internet. Okay, so now I've asked for SID and SID2. Now I have this information. Um, I can ask for password and password too. I will have this information. And the other thing that I will I will, I need to check is the OTI URL. I, and I want to know what kind of OTI URL is right now on the device. And I have the imdalmos.com slash pocgood.bin but we don't want to be good, we want to be bad or evil so we'll publish, change the, uh, the topic to be HTTP imdalmos uh, poc evil bin imdalmos, okay, I think it's cool, that's okay so I now I will publish it and it will return uh, a signifying result that if there is a new value for OTA URL named imdalmos.com plcevil.bin. Now the fun part. Uh, I'll, I'll just ready my machine. Okay. Uh, it's not, I need to get it a bit bigger. Yeah. Okay, better, right? I guess. Okay. I think it's uh, pretty decent. Uh, we'll have a. Um, I'm just opening up the connection. Of course, the port need to be 1337. Uh, that's the designated port within the firmware that will connect to it and have a shellback. Uh, and now we need to pray. I need to pray, and we'll have an upgrade for for forcing an upgrade. I'm just changing the command for upgrade, and the message should be one for forcing an upgrade. Upgrade right now. Ready? No one's ready? Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay, okay, okay. I can't see you, but I believe you. Okay, oh, uh, upgrade. I am down, I suppose, eh? Okay, offline, that's good. That, that's supposed to happen. Now it downloads my evil code. Is it hot here? Just me? Yeah, yeah. It's I am Dalmos is a real. You can do it by yourself. You just you can down you, you can download it by yourself. I am Dalmos slash poc evil dot bin. You can have the binary if you want. Okay, we're waiting, waiting. We should have a, a designated designation that the, the download was successful, and it should be restarting in a few seconds. Oh, block loop, it happens uh, from time to time, I need to do it again. It happened to me one time, but it should be okay. 
uh, closed loop means that the, it has some kind of a communication problem, but I'm just doing it again. So again, I'm, I'm publishing an OTA URL, which is unfamiliar for him, and now I'm upgrading. I'm not stressed at all. So Sefer is starting, that's a good... Oh! Now we can talk forever. Okay, uh, so just finishing up, uh, I want to say thank you again for everyone for being here and thank you for the opportunity. And now if we have some time for questions, I think we have four minutes, right, Avi? 45 seconds, that's a lot. And so we have some time for one question, maybe? You'll see? One question? Someone? I can't see anyone, so. Okay, I will. One question, and then you can meet with the coverage. What device? Oh, you have me? Yes, you Okay. Um, thank you. For, thank you for this question. The, the, the chip is only uh, on-off chip. You can put it on and off. That's it from remotely. Because of the Wi-Fi chip, it's pretty easy to implement within the wall or after a socket. And then you can just make any kind of uh, home device into an automated home device. One more question because it was a very basic one. One more question. Okay. My server? Broker? In my case, just for convenience for the demo, it is right here in the Raspberry Pi, in the same uh, vicinity. But usually you will have a broker within your, within your home with, which is connected to the cloud uh, or some other, maybe not cloud, just other servers, uh, server which is funding the internet. So you can connect from the outside and make it's like, uh, I don't know, you want to preheat the water before you get home. So you need to... You assume. Uh, it, it isn't, it, most, of, most of the devices that I checked, I think more than 70% of them wasn't authenticated at all. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I want to answer this guy. Can I, Yossi? Can I answer this guy? Okay. About mitigations. First of all, wait before you implement. That's the first, you can call it the first generation. That's the best advice that I can tell you. But. If you are eager to use MQTT, know your devices. Don't buy anything that you can't read your, the code by yourself for now. And hopefully, I'm, I'm uh, correlating with other researchers that I'm, I'm, are into, uh, into, into researching MQTT and trying to devise a protocol for this kind of communication between the broker and the publisher. But for now, just know your publisher and authenticate by default without anonymous connections. That will solve most of the problem. Thank you, guys. Thank you.